All right, it is time to start decaling. Uh, the first step in decaling is research. So you need to go to your resources again, and I would just accumulate all of the uh, various stencils and markings that you want to create. Uh, get a good collection of them. Look at uh, decaling sheets from models. Often models have nice sheets to tell you at least where stuff is. You may not be able to read everything, but at least you know that there's you know an octane sticker here and insignia there. Um, also, they often have nice uh, unit markings, nose art. You can use these as a basis for your drawings as well. So gather all your information together first, as always. And then go into something like Photoshop or GIMP or something and create your decals. So here are just, uh, you know, I tried to match fonts and colors as best I can. And I've created uh, just several groups of, of decals that I'm going to put on the model. So I think I've got four sets of groups here for various bits and pieces of the plane. Uh, one thing that Substance Painter doesn't do that I'm aware of is, or it does poorly, is that anything that's black on your decals is going to be hard to see because when you project paint in Substance Painter, the background looks like this. Um, it's just black. So if you have black text somewhere on your decal sheet, you're not going to know where it is. Um, it's going to be very hard to position. You're just going to be really guessing. Uh, so what I do is I create these little white boxes around the text that's black so that when I'm in Substance Painter, I'll know where this is. I'll know basically where this is. Um, and then... Um, you know, I can position it using this box. And what I'll do is I'll keep this image open on the side, on the side monitor, while I'm positioning my templates so that I can kind of get it roughly in place using that white box as a as a targeting thing, and then I can erase the box if I need to. But just, just to be forewarned, you'll see that when we get into Substance Painter. So these are all been exported as PNGs with alphas in the background, so I have those ready to go. And we're just going to import them into our assets here. And we've done this before. You want to add resources. And I'm going to go to my colors folder, which I think is where they are. And I have my stencils one, two, three, and four. So I'm just control clicking on those to select all of them. I'm going to open, click and drag. So I, when I type in here, it's going to enter all the way across. And I'm going to call these textures. And current session works fine. And I'm going to import them. All right. So let's start with something big and easy, like the side cross here on the fuselage. I'm just looking off on my monitor on the side, trying to figure out where this thing is. So it's going to be this stencil. So I want to create a new, um, actually, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it decals. And in this, I'm going to create a paint layer. And this is going to be my first one. Uh, if you're doing multiple aircraft, you might want to, if you're doing painting for multiple aircraft, say if you're doing, you know, like a squadron of these things, you have different numbers and insignia, then you can have a separate folder for the, the decals that are unique to the aircraft, and then a separate folder for the decals that are common to them, you know, like national insignia, uh, grab here kind of things. Um, for right now, though, I'm just going to stick it all into one. And you would, of course, name these um, appropriately. So this this uh, cross is going to go right here. So I want to hit the three key on my keypad, part of the top row, and I want to add in this stencil to my base color. And you can see that it goes up there. And you can scale it using the Shift S in the right, and Shift Middle, I can drag it. And you know, just trying to look to my right here, looking at my monitor, trying to eyeball it, getting an idea of how big this guy is. It looks like it it sits right on this seam line and goes almost to that identification stripe in the drawing that I'm looking at. So it's, it's pretty big, maybe a little too big there. Now for something like this, this one, we definitely want to put on mirror modifier because we want it to be on both sides. So mirror's on, and I'm just going to paint this right on there. Just making sure that your flow and opacity are set. All right, so that is that one. You see I've got a little bit too much here, which is fine. I can hit the two key, go into delete mode, or erase mode, making sure that my channel matches my painting channel. And I can just erase that. And it looks like I got some a little bit of extra junk here. I can get rid of that too. And some there too. All right, so we got our first, our first decal showed up on both sides. Now sometimes there's a decal um, or a stencil that uh, is isn't can't be mirrored directly across the x-axis. So for example, if I wanted to put a um, like a, a tail number here, so one of these guys has I'm going to call this side side cross while we're here. Um, so for example, I could put in another layer here, and I'm going to use this. I'm going to go back to my paint. I'm going to use this guy as my, I don't want to go to paint, I want to go to project, sorry, and drag this into my color, change that over. And you can see now we've got this this two that I want to put here and there. Now if I just go ahead and project paint this across the side, 
And what happens on the other side, you add it backwards too. So clearly we can't do that. So what I do in this case is, you know, I project it from this side first, and then on the other side, I create another layer, and I line up my stencil to match exactly where that guy was. And then I turn off symmetry, and I paint the new two on top of it. And then if I hide this one, you can see that we have a two that's properly, properly aligned. Then I can turn the bad one back on, right? That was the original with the mirror. And if I select that one, I can hit the two key, go into erase mode, and then I can erase it just from the one side of the plane. So that's left, the two on that side, and then on this side, I have a two. And that way, looking at the top, they're going to line up perfectly, you know, front to back, and you know, side to side, they're going to line up perfectly. Now let's talk about the spinner. Um, they have a couple different options. You can be solid, there's ones with like three-quarter black weight, and there's also that kind of cool spiral. So let's try the spiral here. Go into front view, and go into projection, and I've already dragged my texture there. And I just created the spiral in Photoshop using the twist function. I'm just going to try to size it up so I get most of it. We're just going to project it straight on from the front and see how it looks once we get that done. Uh, just make sure you get everything here because it would be impossible to line it back up once you move the plane around. So looks pretty good. Go back to brush mode. And I got a spirally nose there. So we're going to call this spiral. And we're going to put a black mask on it to hide it. And then I can go into my mask mode. And by object, I want to take all those bits. And now we have our spirally tip. And I realized that I didn't actually demonstrate those little white boxes that I talked about earlier on how to position stencils that are black or very dark. So I'm going to create another layer here. And I'm going to um, put in the, the grab here. There's a, there's a grab here, uh, alpha block. And, stencil that goes above this handhold. And I know that by looking at my Photoshop image that it's here on my decal sheet, but you can see that in Substance Painter there's nothing here. You can't see anything. So I'm just using this this white box here to line things up and scale it. Because uh, otherwise you'd be just kind of flying blind here. So I'm just getting the edge lined up and there's you know there's still some some blindness going because I don't know exactly you know where that that stencil is, but you know, I can start putting it in here. And uh, if I'm lucky, I get a pretty good, pretty good placement. Now it's I got a little extra stuff there. I can erase that easily enough. Uh, you can see I missed stuff. So before actually moving anything, uh, it's a good idea to just keep, make sure you paint stuff or else you're going to have a tough time lining stuff back up again. And I'm going to do the same trick on the other side where, uh, you know, like I did with the number two. And here you want to make sure you don't um, move the camera either to or from the image because it'll be harder to get your scales exactly the same. And in this case, I'm just going to create a new layer and just paint it just manually. Because um, I'm not too, too worried about it being quite lined up like I did with the, uh, with the National Insignia. It'll be a little harder to see here, so I don't really care that I didn't have mirror on. All right, so that's, that's just a demonstration of those little boxes. Otherwise, you're just guessing. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Now, I think I'm done putting on the stencils and decals at this point, and it is time to export this out into the external files and see what it looks like in Blender. So go under File, Export Textures, and we only need to do the interior ones. But I'm doing base, height, roughness, and height's going to be 32-bit TIFF, so I don't get stepping. Metallic, I want to do the OpenGL normal, um, and I think that is it. All right, so I'll export. All right, save settings. Save the file just to be safe. All right, here we are back in Blender. I've added a, an image plane here. It's just a picture of sky. I took out the window of an airplane just to put something in the background during our test renders, just for fun. And I've run a couple of test renders here just to see how things look. At this point, we're just looking to see if there's any stretching. Are the, disc, are the decals clean? Um, so far, everything looks pretty good. And the words are readable. I don't see any obvious deformations anywhere. Uh, the next step is going to be adding some distress to the aircraft. Uh, worn edges, uh, we're going to be adding some dirt to the panel lines, uh, probably going back and readdressing the bump map, or at least enhancing it to help um, you know, add some skin wrinkles to where, so we can kind of highlight the underlying structure. 
But in general, the project's going along pretty well. So I will see you in the next one.